Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we help folks find high-value home theater, hi-fi, and headphone equipment. And today we're talking about the Monolith by Monoprice Encore B6 Bookshelf Speakers. So, sit down, grab a cup of mid-afternoon coffee, and let's talk about the Monolith by Monoprice Encore B6s. Today's sponsor is Sith Audio, Audiophile Toothpaste. Finally, whenever you think about oral hygiene, guaranteed, Sith Audio is at the top of your mind. It fights gingivitis, enamel erosion, cavities, halitosis, and any type of mouth fungus you may have picked up while you're backpacking through Peru. And it does it the Audiophile way. That's right, it combats all this the Audiophile way. I throw money at it. That's right, Sith Audio Audiophile Toothpaste. $47 a tube, comes in 0.75 ounce tubes. The Monolith Monoprice Encore B6 Bookshelf Speaker, six and a half inch woofer. Yeah, 25 millimeter, 0.98 inch Silk Dome Tweeter, ginormous waveguide, rear ported, has a piano gloss finish on the top and interestingly enough on the bottom just in case you want to look at the bottom of your speaker real real nice has a wood grain looking vinyl wrap on the back it has five-way binding posts that look awful similar to some of the elac offerings so let's talk about monoprice first let's talk about the naming nomenclature naming model number name b6 okay elac had a speaker named the b6 encore okay GR Research has a speaker named Encore, XLS Encore. Coincidence? I don't know. Put on your audiophile conspiracy hats. Put a thing up on your wall where you put pictures and pins and then you put yarn between it and then you can go like that. Maybe. Maybe the speaker Illuminati is involved. I don't know. All I can tell you is called the Encore B6. And both those names are already taken. Specifications rated from 49 up to 30k i think hold on let me check sorry i was wrong 49 up to 20k crossed over at 1200 hertz now the high pass or the filter circuit that's on the tweeter is an 18 db per octave crossover what does that mean it's a third order crossover so it's taking the the tweeter level and going like that so that's a pretty steep crossover the low pass filter 1200 hertz 12 db per octave which means second order crossover here's where it gets interesting folks rated down to 85 db 4 ohms so what does that mean it means this is not an easy speaker to drive not very sensitive low impedance so you're probably going to need beefy amplifier amplification fire something with some juice sound stage and imaging obviously if you look at this waveguide one could deduce if one was into deductive reasoning that this thing sound stages and images quite well. And I'm here to attest that it does. Alanis said MTV unplugged her cover of King of Pain, which is quite good. The applause after she started, uh, wow. Deep, wide, all over the place. It's very impressive. Very, very impressive. Chocolate chip trip by tool. Seamless travel between the right and left speakers. I didn't have to mess with these fiddle with them or talk them into imaging well or sound staging well just did out of the box easily disappears this thing is a sound stage and imaging savant it makes sense if you look at this kind of looks like the uh bucart something or other the bucart speakers have a big old wave guide like this and it also sets the tweeter pretty far back so time alignment let's talk about bass This speaker excels at giving you a large quantity of it. Good at soundstage, good at imaging, good at giving you a ton of bass. Frankly, the only other speakers that I've had or heard that do better as far as bass quantity or presence, Q Acoustics 3030i, CSS Crichtons. Crichtons are a speaker kit. Quite a bit more expensive than this too. 3030i's are more expensive too. Ton of bass presence. Highway to Hell felt a little bit mm, boosted. Large 
Intergalactic by the Beastie Boys had me looking for a subwoofer. And I don't even have a subwoofer in the office. So it must have been doing something right. Because I was looking for a subwoofer in the office where I didn't have one. Also, I had these in my bedroom for about the last three weeks. So these were handling home theater duties in my bedroom. We'll talk about that in the final thoughts. Bass is big. It's present. Can get a bit muddy. It's not the most clear, fast, quick bass out there. But we need to be reasonable. These are $179 a piece. It's not going to be like they're perfect. Lacks a bit of clarity on the bottom end. But most people, they're just going to be like, whoa. They're going to be more impressed by the amount of it than the lack of clarity on it. Okay. Let's talk about mid-range. Mid-range. So soundstage and imaging, great. Bass, standout from a quantity perspective. Mid-range, a bit veiled. Also, slight resonances. So I've never used this song before, but it just came on and I noticed some things. Um, Brick by Ben Folds 5. At the seven and 12 second mark, with the piano, there's a bit of resonance. It just seemed a bit off. It's weighty though. There's there's plenty of weight, plenty of presence, but it lacks enough clarity that it doesn't quite sound realistic. Redemption Song by Bob Marley was quite enjoyable to listen to, but the reverb from the acoustic guitar, hearing kind of inside the guitar and his voice just simply lacked clarity. It wasn't bad, it just wasn't as clear as most other speakers I've heard. For home theater use, I, I always run in speakers in my bedroom. So what I do is I hook them up in the bedroom. They're the front speakers for my home theater and all the TV watching we do in there. I take off the center channel so all the dialogue is, is being split up between these two speakers. It's a good way to kind of get to know them. It's a good way to break them in without being real aggressive about it. One of the things I noticed immediately with this speaker, and that previously I had my Yamo C93 concert series speakers up there, they're crazy detailed. So immediately I heard a reduction in detail. However, it wasn't enough that I ever thought, I can't understand what they're saying. It was just down a notch. So clarity on dialogue definitely wasn't up to par with the Yamo C93 Mach 2. Let's talk about treble. So the lack of clarity moves into the treble as well. Harvester of Sorrow. That song, it really puts cymbals on display. And frankly, the cymbals were pushed way back in the mix. They were there. I could hear them. As far as cymbal decay, stuff's just not hanging out. And I don't think it's because really the driver isn't particularly clear. I just think the levels are so low that I can't hear it. So Africa by Weezer, the cover from Toto. Generally speaking, on a speaker that has a bit of treble clarity, those cymbals are going to hang out for a long time. And they just didn't. I just couldn't hear them. The treble response here was is just lower. And interestingly enough, I was looking at their website, and they do give a frequency response chart. And it showed that there was a rise after 10K. I just didn't hear it. Um, 10K, you're going to hear air, you're going to hear space, you're going to hear reverb, you're going to hear acoustic guitars. Not necessarily the guitars, but the string plucks, things like that. I just didn't hear it on this speaker. Not saying that's bad, but their frequency response graph did not match up to what I was hearing. So what are my final thoughts? Final thoughts. So at $179 a piece, these speakers warrant serious consideration. Why? Because they play bigger than any other speaker that I've heard, maybe with the exception of the ELAC debut B6. Also has a very similar sound signature. I think the B6 bests it in mid-range clarity, top-end clarity, and overall refinement, but guess what? You can't get that speaker anymore. The B6 is also probably the best sound staging and imaging speaker in this price range really separates itself out, no pun intended, from the rest of the crowd at this price range. It throws a big soundstage. It images quite well and makes sense, right? Mid-range is a bit veiled. Treble is a bit recessed. But these had me bobbing my head just the same because with that bass level, there's a 
oomph in your chest that you can really hear the music and it makes me connect with the music when I can feel it a bit. So although I do like clarity and I do like air, this speaker still resonated with me, no pun intended, because of the bass response, because of the size. And these play way bigger than they are. Bass heads are gonna love this speaker. People that get fatigued easily are going to love this speaker. Clarity and treble nuts probably should look elsewhere. Easy recommendation for this speaker if you know what you're getting yourself into. The speaker sounds very similar to the Elac WB6, also the Andrew Jones first generation Pioneer speakers. Warm, it is a warm speaker. So if you wanna support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cheap Audio Man. Every Sunday night we have Patreon only Zooms. Also have a Patreon only Facebook group. You can also buy some merchandise. I got the Rocktopus t-shirt on today. There's links in the description for that. I will link the Monolith B Encore B6s. That's an affiliate link. So if you buy this speaker through them, I will get a commission. You can also sign up for Amazon Music. There's a link in the description. Sign up. You get three months for free or six months of Disney Plus for free. I get a couple of dollars. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge, listen, maybe through your monoprice Bass Monsters Encore B6 and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.